now we are going to learn dna separation technique called electrophoresis see as a result of restriction digestion we have got many different sized dna fragments in a test tube consider this in a test tube when we are adding a restriction into nucleus it will digest the dna and as a result of restriction digestion we will get different sized fragments among these different sized fragment one is my gene of interest so what i'm going to do next is i have to separate and isolate my particular desired gene of interest for that i have to separate these restriction digested dna fragments that separation of restriction digestion fragment what we can call it as yes we are calling it as electrophoresis we are using less intensified electric current for separating dna fragments here you can see an electrophoretic apparatus see it's a glass vessel like this and here you can see some depressions and these depressions we are calling it as wells the portion of wells we are connecting it into the negative electrode of electrophoretic apparatus and opposite side we are connecting it into the positive electrode and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take the dna and i'm going to load the dna into the wells now see how it works i'm loading the dna sample into the wells and these wells you can see it is connected to the negative electrode after pouring dna what i'm going to do yes i'm going to switch on the electric current so when i'm switching on the electric current what will happen let's see dna starts to migrate from negative electrode to positive electrode because dna is having which charge negative charge when we are applying electric current negatively charged dna starts to move from the negative wells towards opposite side or positive electrode and this migration is depends on the size of the dna fragments you can see here larger fragments that means the fragments with more number of base pairs can occupy the position near to the wells or near to negative electrode smaller fragments that means fragments with lesser number of base pairs can move faster and they can occupy the position near to positive electrode that means after electrophoresis you can see dna bands like this smaller fragments you can always see near to the positive electrode whereas larger fragments you can visualize it near to the negative electrode or wells so this separation technique we are calling it as electrophoresis now you just compare this it was there in the test tube as different fragments after doing electrophoresis we got different fragments and i told you earlier smaller fragments you can see near to the positive electrode whereas larger fragments you can see near to the negative electrode and this migration is purely depending on two factors one is its charge as dna is negatively charged thing and we are loading it into the negative electrode that's why it is moving into the positive electrode when we are applying electric current second thing is that its size i already told you that larger fragments cannot able to move farther from the wells that's why it is occupying near to the wells so basis of electrophoresis is that it is based on the charge and it is absolutely based on the size so we can use electrophoresis 
not only for separating desired DNA fragments, but also for checking the progress of restriction digestion. Because when we are adding restriction endonucleases to the DNA sample, we are not sure whether it is digested or not. If it is digested, definitely it will separate and we can see the band pattern like this. So, once we are analyzing the band pattern, we can clearly visible whether the fragments are digested. So, this process what we are calling as electrophoresis. DNA separation technique we can call it as electrophoresis and this technique was discovered by Tiselius. So, Tiselius the scientist who discovered electrophoresis for separating DNA fragment. When we are doing electrophoresis, we have used a matrix. What was that? Here for running the DNA, it need a matrix, it need a surface. So, before loading the DNA sample, what we added in them as a matrix? Yes, we have added agarose as a matrix. So, we have melt agarose and we have poured it as a matrix. So, agarose forms a gel-like matrix. When we are doing electrophoresis in a gel-like matrix made up of agarose, we can call it as what? Agarose gel electrophoresis. So, DNA separation is not only based on the size and charge, but also based on the sieving effect of this agarose matrix. As we are using agarose gel for the separation of DNA fragment as a matrix, we can call it as agarose gel electrophoresis.